Hey everybody, welcome back. Today we've got another MagnaPan that we're doing an upgrade on. This one's the MagnaPan LRS Plus. So it's still a very short model. Definitely a model you need to be seated at seated level to keep your ear near the middle of the array. It's got some legs on it that are have a little bit of a loop extension on it. Brings it up off the floor a little bit. It still is a little bit shaky, typical of the stands that you see on the magna pans uh but um it is what it is let's just let's dive right into this thing and first just take a look at the factory measurements talk about that a little bit and then we'll look at what i was able to do with it and then we're going to look at the parts that come with the speaker versus what we're putting on it and what you can expect uh from that upgrade so let's look at the on-axis measurements and i had hobbs measure this when it came in Measured it at meter, and the reason we measured it at meter, uh, one meter and one watt to, to look at the output level. And then we moved out to 55 inches to get an overall better, um, a better blend of the driver. So looking at one watt, one meter, uh, we can see that sensitivity is not too bad down on the mid-base panel. A little low on the tweeter end, it averages about 84 dB sensitivity. Um, you know, looking a little bit the same when we moved out to 55 inches. We're gating some of the room response off of it, so we're not getting a full room response. This is a gated time window, but that's about as far away as we can get without seeing a floor reflection. Um, the drivers in this thing are playing on top of each other, meaning that the, the mid-base driver, mid-base panel, actually plays up higher than the tweeter. And the tweeter is playing a range where it's it's playing almost full range. Uh, in fact, let's look at a driver measurement that I took at 63 inches or 62 inches and look at how much further the mid-base panel plays than the tweeter. It actually has a little lip at the top. So you could just about play that panel full range and not even use a tweeter except the fact that as you move left or right off axis, it will beam quite a bit. So the tweeter element is a lot narrower than the than the base element. The tweeter element is about this wide versus the rest of the panel. But with them playing over on top of each other like they are, as you move left or right, the time arrival between one versus the other becomes out of phase, even with just a little bit of movement each way, and it completely wrecks the response. That's why with the magnet pans, if you move out of the sweet spot just a little bit, the frequency response completely changes and it just it's it's everywhere now i say they're letting the drivers play on top of each other there's a 0.82 millihenry little bitty laminated i-core inductor on the mid base panel which lets it play up really high and then there's a 110 microfarad value on the tweeter letting it play down really low and on some of these models they actually wired them in series so that it acts kind of like a second order but the way these overlap, it's still letting the tweeter play down pretty much as far as it can play. And what happens then is once you get a lot of power on it to where you're actually getting reasonable output out of this thing, the tweeter's completely stressed. The tweeter begins to distort and it, it just compresses and falls apart. So not a great idea letting it play down that low. In fact, let's look at the off axis in both directions to get an idea of what I'm talking about when you move left or right on this thing. Uh, moving towards the tweeter axis. Now look at the red line on this thing and then look closely for the orange and yellow. That's 10 and 20 degrees off axis. The green and blue line is 30 and 40 degrees off axis, which is going to be pretty rough. That's pretty far off. But notice how much change takes place from just a little bit of movement. That's a pretty big change in response. The other off-axis is we went in the direction of the tweeter. Again, look at the red line, and then look what happens in the orange and the yellow. In fact, in some places right here, uh, I'm going to say between a 700 and 1800 hertz, it actually becomes more in phase when you move off-axis, and it humps up right there. That's the lower range of the tweeter. It's actually playing down that low pretty solidly and so it's humping up the response as you move off and then after that it's actually out of phase and it's canceling that out 
and it has really horrible output there. Um, impedance curve, that's the last thing we'll look at. If you note the impedance, you can see that the drivers are literally playing on top of each other. Instead of there being a rise where there's a crossover where one, one filter is limiting the lows and the other is limiting the highs and you see a rise, you're seeing the opposite here. You're seeing a dipped area where they're, they're most on top of each other and it drops down to 2.8 ohms. So a little bit of a tough load uh, for a lot of amplifiers and stuff. And again, looking at the parts quality, a little laminated I-core, electrolytic cap with a poly bypass. And then let's talk about this a little bit. You know, the reason they put this fuse in line with the tweeter is to, is to kind of protect it so that when you put too much power on it, it just pops the fuse, which keeps the tweeter from self-destructing. The right way to do that is not using a fuse, which is not what you want in the signal path. The way to do it is to cross the tweeter off so that it's not playing down low, then it never gets stressed at all. And the power that it can handle uh, electrically, or the thermal power, is much greater than the power that it can handle mechanically when it actually starts over excurting. And then these panels are put on everything. The back side of this fuse holder does have steel inputs on it. All the uh, nuts on the back of this thing are all steel. These these uh, little screws on the top that you connect um, when you stick a banana plug in there and tighten it down, those are steel. And directly in the signal path right here, as you can see, it connects these two, is a steel bar that the signal's having to go through. So that the worst possible thing you can have in the signal path is all of this. If you literally get this out of the signal path, the clarity comes up quite a bit. So that's the way it... That's the way it comes from the factory. Now, let's see what I was able to do with this thing. Um, let's look at the new frequency response at one meter. In fact, let's look at the new frequency response compared to the old frequency response at one meter. You can see it's definitely a lot smoother. And we tried to keep, at one meter, it's going to be a little louder on the mid bass panel than the tweeter panel. That's why you see it tilted up like that. As you move further and further away into the room, that actually flattens out a little bit. Um, look again at this one that's 63 inches away. Uh, it's flattened out quite a bit and it's really smooth. Uh, looking at the off axis measurements, looking at it um, going towards the tweeter, notice it maintains at 10 and 20 degrees off axis. Very little change in the response. It's still really smooth. Uh, a little bit of a dipped area there at the crossover point. And as you move uh, 30 to 40 degrees off axis, it begins to cancel at the crossover point. That's because there actually is a crossing over point. Looking at the um, off axis going away from the tweeter, it's even better in that regard. Looking at the red and orange lines, hardly moves. Yellow line still looks great, 20 degrees off axis. 30 and 40 degrees off axis, green and blue, you, you start to see it drop off a little bit. But overall, looks fantastic. And let's look at... The crossover response, you can see what I was able to do with this thing. You can see the tweeter actually rolls off instead of just playing out there flat with a knee at the bottom. And the mid base panel is rolling off. We've got a bigger coil on it. We're keeping it from playing up so high. And we're keeping that tweeter from playing down so low. So we're getting a nice sum, getting a nice smooth sum. Looking at the um, impedance curve, you can see it only drops to 4 ohms. In fact, I think it's 4 point something ohms there at the tweeter end, 4.5 ohms. So it's a much easier load on the amplifier than it was. And let's look at the spectral decay on it. There's a spectral decay, very clean on this thing. Um, not a lot of stored energy there. The panels are very lightweight. That's one of the reasons that these things sound as good as they do uh, is because they dissipate stored energy, energy real quickly. Um, looking at the parts quality upgrade, this is very significant. We're going from this little bitty laminated I-core to a big air core, which is going to sound a lot cleaner, more open in the vocals. Um, the tweeter, instead of just a great big cap on it, we've got a much smaller cap with one resistor and a small core. We're doing a second order filter, and that way it matches the roll off of the woofer with the first order filter. So we're getting matching acoustic roll offs with this curve. And then we're going to throw in a, a set of tube connectors so you can put tube connectors in there which is pure copper connection and you'll be able to get all of this out of the signal path basically what you do with this is you 
you take it apart, you unscrew all of this off of it, you pop the fuse out of it, and you use this as a template. And you make, you cut you a little piece of MDF or a little piece of plywood that's this size, and you lay this over it and you use this to mark the holes where the screws go, and you drill your holes in it and you paint it black, and then you just drill your two holes in there for the set of tube connectors to insert in there, and you're gonna connect the new crossover right there in that space, right there where the tube connectors are gonna mount, just right next to it. And we noticed that the space that they left for this is almost big enough to put this in there flat. You may have to go in there with a little die grinder or something and just grind it out just a little, just sand it out a little on each side and then this big air core will slide right in there. And if you put this one, the smaller coil, flat on the other side of it, there's enough space that you can mount them both flat. If you get it any closer, you need to get it up on its end so that the poles are facing an opposite direction. Other than that, there's really nothing to the crossover. It's very simplistic, very easy. It's an easy upgrade. You're going to spend more time uh, disassembling the speaker than actually building the crossover. You got all the little um, staples you need to remove off the bottom of the uh, off the panel to undo the sock. And once you undo all those staples, you can slide the sock up and you can see the whole thing. And you can do all the upgrades. You're going to pull off all those push-on connectors, and then you're going to solder directly all the new wiring that comes with this, which is. Not little thin PVC jacket of wire, but uh, a heavier gauge, polyethylene jacketed, solid core, four nines, pure copper, good stuff in the signal path. You get, you're going to connect everything with that. Um, this is going to improve clarity and detail by a significant margin over, over the way it is from the factory. Uh, add a small subwoofer to this, and it's going to be a very nice sounding system. Very transparent, very open. A nice introduction to open baffle sound. It gets uh, obviously away from that box sound and people that hear it, that like it, they like it a lot, they love it. And it's hard not to like open baffle, especially in a big planar magnetic design like this. If you throw something in there to cover the bottom end, these little speakers here are great. And you'll need a good 100 to 200 watts of power to drive these things. Keep in mind they are a low, MP a low sensitivity and they need power. So once you get enough power on them to where you can get them up to good levels, you're going to enjoy these a lot. And this is going to be a very inexpensive upgrade. It doesn't involve many parts. We'll get all this up on the website so you can check it out, and then you can just order it online. By the time the video launches, we'll try to have this up. And that's it for this one. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, I enjoy doing the MagnaPan upgrades other than the disassembly process to get to this stuff. But other than that, I enjoy working on the MagnaPan stuff. And, um, yeah, we'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.